I honestly can't pinpoint an actual characteristic to rapists because I feel that a rapist can be anyone. So they can be rich, poor, attractive, not attractive, drunk, not drunk. <laughs> I guess I think of someone who um, otherwise, you know, is maybe socially awkward or uh, or maybe someone who, like, for, for lack of a better term, can't get laid otherwise. Or maybe somebody who that has happened to them. The characteristics I would associate with a rapist would probably be a sketchy person, um, not very social. All right. I guess any uh, characteristics I associate with a rapist could uh, could be anyone. It could be the guy next door. It could be your father. It could be your boyfriend. There's really nothing that stands out as to what would be anyone. When I think of um, a rapist, I try not to, you know, pinpoint one particular group of people, but um, um, with lots of the stories that I see on the news, I see that most of them tend to be African-American males, um, although I do tend to see um, a lot of white males also. But, I mean, I think that it could be a majority of people. Um, I think that it would tend to be, you know, a lower-income um, person as well. Um, that's what I think. that a rape would happen in my mind I think of it happening like on an alleyway some you know dark place um, maybe not even alleyway but some somewhere where there's not a lot of people around it could be on an elevator it could be you know in a stairwell or you know just some alley where there's not people around I think the most the first thing I thought of was prison in a setting like that but um, I guess when you're talking about in Columbia say um, I guess Maybe at different houses, or I don't know if apartments would count in that. Is that is that the same place, or I guess dorm rooms? Um, I don't know. You always hear about people getting <laughs> getting sexually assaulted in the park at night. I don't know. Um, yeah. I feel like the place where someone would be most likely to experience a rape is somewhere outside and dark and secluded. Um, maybe somewhere where someone isn't really aware of their actual surroundings and how unsafe they are, but then also I don't think people realize how much they happen at a bar when someone gets extremely drunk and someone sees this happening or makes them get drunk and takes advantage of them and rapes them. They, um, in darker alleyways or in sketchy areas in cities where... Um, People are walking by themselves or... I would imagine the most common place that a woman might be raped would probably her bed or her boyfriend's bed or maybe just a friend's bed at a party. It could happen anywhere. personally had to guess how many rape or apparent rapes are lies, I would probably say a pretty small percentage considering apparently they say, they say that a lot of rapes go un, un, uh, unreported anyhow. So if uh, you're just going off the, the ones that are reported, I'd say no more than 10%. I think that out of all the rapes that are reported, I think that if there were, you know, 10 um, rapes that were reported, I think that probably eight of them were probably true, and the other two would probably be, be fabricated and made up. 
I wouldn't know how many reported rapes are actually lies, but I would know a lot that whether she was raped in her opinion or whether she was raped in the guy's opinion differed. I don't know how many that would be. comes to get the survivor they sit down and talk about what's happened the state nurse asks the survivor about an hour and a half worth of questions from there the state nurse moves to the exam process um, which will take on a good day an hour and a half on a bad day and depending on the extent of the survivor's injuries can take up to four to six hours the exam starts um, because you have to consider the person's body as part of a crime scene so they have to they get a piece of white paper out for the person to stand on in a sheet and the person has to stand on that sheet and take off all of their clothes and shoes. All of their clothes and shoes are then confiscated as evidence and the person is given a hospital gown. After the person's clothes have been confiscated and they have that hospital gown, the same nurse looks them over from head to toe for any um, visible injuries. They're looking for scratches, um, bruises, anything like that that could have started to show up. From documenting the injuries, the person then goes to the table and they proceed uh, to turn the light off and get out a black light and wear special glasses just like in CSI and scan the person from head to toe. And if there's any DNA on their body, it will fluoresce. So if the survivor says, he licked my left breast, then the same nurse knows to look at the left breast and see if there's any saliva that can be collected. Um, and after they've completed the external part, they move down to the genital area to work on the um, exam down there. Um, they start by having the survivor scoot down to the very edge of the table, um, and they're wearing just that hospital gown. Uh, they have to put their feet in the stirrups, whether male or female, and um, the survivor will look over their entire genital area on the outside. They take a bright purple dye that's really cold because it's sanitized and pour it over their genital area. And then at that point, the same nurse is looking for brats. That's bruising, redness, abrasions, From tearing, looking and swelling. at the outside and uh, collecting every evidence that's possible to collect there. The state nurse will then get out the um, speculum uh, on a female and go for an inside vaginal exam, um, much like a pelvic exam. After the state nurse has completed the pelvic exam, she will move down below to look in the anal area. From there, the state nurse will then take three or four vials of blood, and some nurses do that at the beginning, some do it at the end, so they'll tap in and draw typically between three and five vials of blood that are used to test for drugs, pregnancy, and um, to use as evidence. Um, the nurse will also do a buccal swab, which is the swab inside the cheek, to establish a match. Depending on the circumstance, um, a, a lot of people don't have pubic hair anymore, so if a survivor does have pubic hair, the same nurse before the exam starts will comb through their pubic hair to see if there are any foreign pubic hairs. Um, and locked within the survivor's own pubic hair. So it's a very intrusive, complicated process that takes a I do think that a male can be a victim of sexual assault. Um, when I first think of a man being raped, I think of jail being raped by another man. But then I also believe that a male can be raped by women, whether it's um, at a bar, and I just think that a woman could just as easily take advantage of a guy than a guy can take advantage of a girl at a bar. 
I think it's definitely possible for a male to be a victim of rape by not only a male, but as well as a um, female. You see it in jails all the time. You see it um, on the streets. I don't think that rape is just specifically um, something that is dealt with with a, with a female. In my opinion, no, it is impossible for a male to be the victim of, of rape by a female. And absolutely it's possible for a male to be the victim of a rape by another male. I think it's entirely possible for men to be either raped by other men or uh, raped by females. But usually if it's female, it's going to be because maybe she's in power, she has something to hold over him, black male. He may not want to do it, but he might agree to it just to keep things easy, to keep things calm, maybe in their working relationship or Violence prevention is important because people need to be educated on the trends of violence and know that it, violence is not right. Um, I think a lot of people don't know that people um, are in abusive situations or relationships and they've never known otherwise. So they think that it's normal and they continue the trend. I think that prevention um, helps educate people to be able to stop um, this cycle. Violence prevention is important because it's a really relevant issue in our community and without focusing on prevention then there's nothing, nothing's going to be solved and as long as people can understand how to protect themselves from violence, how to take the measures to avoid letting it occur with them, but can also take the steps to preventing it from happening to other people and not being a part of the problem, then I think that we have a chance of eliminating a lot of the violence that exists in our community. Violence prevention is important because it helps to focus on the problem before it occurs and prevention can also eliminate the underlying causes and risk factors associated with violent behavior. I am dealing with violence prevention in my life by taking these things here and when I get mad, putting them there and saying I am not going to slap the shit out of you if you drive me crazy. I'm going to calmly know that these are not to be used against another person, or these. I have implemented violence prevention in my life by being aware of my surroundings and letting my friends know that they should always be aware of their surroundings and knowing potentially dangerous situations and also um, mediating a situation that could escalate to violence and just Knowing all this Violence prevention has actually become a really big part of my own life. Um, I have really tried to make the effort to raise awareness to people about how much of an issue sexual violence is in Colombia and how relevant it is to not just people in our community, but the people that go to our school, the students that we hang out with. It's sexual assault and sexual violence is happening everywhere. The steps that I've taken for violence prevention in my life is um, just to know your surroundings and know that um, any situation can be potentially dangerous um, situation to be in. And I've let my friends know um, the same thing and um, have become a bystander. And um, if there's a situation that um, looks like it can escalate to violence, I'll kind of step in and mediate the situation um, just so it doesn't. Um, in regards to how my thoughts about violence have cha have evolved over this project, I would have to say that since we started this project, we've done several interviews, and in order to 